Hi, my name is Gijs and today I'm going to tell you a story of a World War II tugboat that became a sailing ship and circumnavigated the world. The ship was built in 1944 in Trenton, Ontario, Canada as one of 156 identical tugboats that were built for the war. They called these tugboats Canada Tugs or Tanax, and in our case we are talking about CT-78. The shipyard that was actually a bridge building company was located two miles land inwards. So the finished tugboats were shipped by train to the nearby river Trent. Once a couple of them had been launched, they would cross Lake Ontario and sail via the canals all the way to New York City. In New York City, they would be loaded onto a merchant ship and shipped all the way across the Commonwealth. This one ended up in 1946 in Strasbourg, France. And it did tug services on the River Rhine for 20 years. After which it was sold to a Dutch tugboat company and it did another 10 years of service. In 1975, this company put it up for sale after they wrecked the engine. In order to make a certain type of ship into another type of ship, all you need is a dream and some skills and some money and a lot of time or no skills, not so much time and a lot of money or you just buy the kind of ship that you want. But that's not the point here. This is how to turn a tugboat into a sailboat. My dad had a little bit of money some skill and a dream to sail around the world. So after looking around for a suitable ship, he was tipped off about the tugboat with a broken engine on a tidal slipway in the south of Holland. After taking a closer look, he liked what he saw and asked his uncle Henk to tow the tugboat all the way to the center of Amsterdam where he could start building his dream. On the inside, the tugboat looked like what you would expect from a ship that has been in continuous service for over 30 years. So cleaning and painting the engine room was the first thing on the list. Converting a tugboat into a sailboat that looks like a sailboat starts with the bow in the stern. Or at least in this case it does. Doing this with the ship in the water means building some staging around the stern and making sure you can work dry. After that you can cut off the bulwarks from the tugboat, install some new frames and hull plating, and then deck beams and deck plating. And a nice transom with big letters. After that, you can work your way to the forward. Here, you should replace the tugboat bow with the clipper bow. Then, you already have something. Most of the time, the ship needs quite some work underwater as well. So you rent a keyhole in the center of Amsterdam and ask a crane company to lift her up on the shore. On the shore, you need to tackle all the bad parts of the hull. Corroded hull plates, a rotten rudder, bilge keels and a box keel. And when you put her back in the water, she needs to be nice and painted. In order to become a sailing ship, of course, you need masts and the jib boom and bumpkins. And now you have a ship that looks like she's ready to sail around the world. But of course, in a story like this, not everything can go smooth and easy. The crane barge comes to lift the beautiful schooner Tairai into the water. But when she starts, slowly lowering her into the water, the ship started heeling to one side, still hanging in the slings of the crane. My dad asked to stop the crane so he could shift some weights on deck in order to get her straight in the water. But after shifting weights, the ship dropped to the other side into the slings of the crane. After this, the crane operators had seen enough. They told my dad to tie the ship to the keyhole 
so they could go on their way and leave him with his capsizing ship to it. He ordered the water bunker barge to pump 7 tons of water into her tanks and then she was straight and stable in the water. After this setback there is a period of 4 years with no photographs in which my dad shifted all the weights that were laying on deck to low points in the ship and cut up the complete steel wheelhouse and put all the parts in the belly of the ship where they lay until today. Now you have a sailing ship with no wheelhouse but at least she's stable and ready for sea trials. So you collect every sail that you can get your hands on for cheap and try all possible combinations of sails. With every combination the ship turns out to be very weather helm. There's multiple ways to fix this. One of them is shortening the aft mast. In the meantime a friend of my dad's bought a fishing cutter that was going to be completely rebuilt so he could buy the aluminium wheelhouse and install it on the ship. With the shortened aft mast the ship turns out to sail quite steady in a straight line. And I think the figurehead also helped. Alright, so she sails. But as I mentioned before, they bought the ship with a broken engine. This engine was repaired, but poorly. So after a few years of constant troubles and repairing her again, the engine finally gave up and kicked out one of the piston pin bearings. If you want to sail your ship around the world, you need a reliable engine. This means cutting a big hole in your deck, making the old engine as light as possible and then removing it with a crane. In its place you take a smaller, more modern engine with a little bit less horsepower but still enough that saves a lot of space. Put back the deck, weld it in place and you are good to go. The same fishing boat that the wheelhouse came off of also had a very nice and pointy mast that fits perfect as a bowsprit to replace your small bowsprit and jibboom. After all, having less moving parts is better. Now it's time to give the ship a nice fresh coat of paint and then she's ready to leave for a four year trip around the world in the worst possible Dutch weather. Here are some pictures for proof. Who knows? We might go again someday. Hi, my name is Gijs and together with my dad I'm rebuilding this almost 8 year old sailing ship in order to get her around the world again. You can follow our progress on this YouTube channel. Currently we are replacing the wheelhouse. The crane is on its way to remove the main mast and the old wheelhouse and put the new wheelhouse on its place. If you have any questions about this video or suggestions or maybe old photographs, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.